televisión argentina de calidad. Clase Ejecutiva. El programa televisivo argentino con certificación de calidad ISO 9001-2008. ¿Desea usted un país de calidad? Entregue calidad. Exija calidad. Una producción Nova Patagonia. We fast forward to uh, fast forward to when I was a senior in high school. My education had gained traction. I was college bound, and I heard some news uh, that uh, that really uh, that that really changed my perspective in terms of and my own expectations of uh, being able to achieve this dream. And 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 that was I had heard. Okay, and that was I had heard that that the. Um, I had heard that the 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 um, NASA had selected the first Latino American astronaut, Dr. Franklin Chang Diaz, and to me that blew my mind because I said, if he was able to do it, why can't I do it? And so that sort of gave me a role model to follow, as and said, you know, he had the same uh, obstacles that I did. He came from Costa Rica, uh, from humble beginnings had brown skin like me and spoke English in an accent. So that's when I said, that's what I want to do. And so I went to college, and, uh, and again, it took me 14 years to get selected as an astronaut. I applied, four, I mean, 12 years, 12 straight times before I finally got selected. So it was a story of perseverance. And as Laurie mentioned, in 2004, that's when I got se selected, trained for two years, 2006, and then got assigned in 2008, and last year, I uh, realized the first mission, which is uh, my first space mission, which was aboard STS-128, aboard Discovery. And what I'd like to show you now is I'd like to show you a summary of that video, and I think they're getting ready to start it, which, uh, which w we blasted off at midnight, so uh, close to midnight. So it's going to be a night launch, and the first thing you're going to see is you're going to see the, uh, the three engines light up. There's a bit of vibration. Then the solid rocket boosters light, light up. There's a lot of vibration, a lot of noise, and then what I felt was just a thrust as we took off, and it only takes eight and a half minutes to get up into space. Good morning, Godspeed. I was mission specialist number two, which means I was sitting right behind both pilots, the commander and the pilot. I was the flight engineer. So I had the best view in the house, the panoramic view is what I call it. Three engines light up. Start the rocket boosters. First four minutes is like an e ticket ride to Disneyland. Second four and a half minutes to start feeling pressure. It feels first like a puppy, then towards the eight and a half minute mark, grows into a St. Bernard. So you have a little trouble expanding your chest. The rocket boosters separate, and you'll see the images of that. There they go. Those come down on parachute in the ocean, and they get retrieved and refurbished. And of course, the shuttle with the three engines continue. There were seven of us, three in the mid deck, as you see in that inset picture, and four of us on the flight deck. You can see external tank separation, ET set. The shuttle's on the top. The tank is the orange one on the bottom. That comes down, disintegrates in pieces, and falls in the ocean. And eight and a half minutes later, after launch, we are in space. We're traveling 17,500 miles an hour, which means we go around the Earth every 90 minutes. There you see me giving the thumbs up. Uh, I can't quite believe we're in space. So like any good scientist, I, ha I need proof. 
And what do I do? I throw stuff and I say, well, I guess we are in space because things are floating. Uh, Nicole Stott, one of our objectives was to deliver her to the International Space Station. We did a crew swap. She stayed behind because she had a three-month mission, and we picked someone, we brought someone home who had been up there for three months. One of the first things we do is we open the payload bay door. Christopher Fuglesan, our Swedish uh, astronaut from Sweden, uh, he, uh, he had the honors of opening it, and we do that for cooling the radiators on the inside portion of the payload bay doors and we need uh, to do that for cooling of our electronic equipment. Uh, then we start reconfiguring the mid-deck. <coughs> we remove the, uh, the, the chairs and we start activating the galley, the food galley. We start activating the restroom and basically just start making room uh, for us to, uh, to work in there in the mid-deck. I start taking out the portable onboard computers. These are the computers that are gonna help us in the navigation, getting us to rendezvous to the International Space Station. Uh, C.J. Sturkow, our commander, he's the last one to get undressed. He comes down from the flight deck and changes the street clothes. Uh, we're already in street clothes, and so we start doing some work. Here we're putting a cycle ergometer together. This is an uh, exercise bike that we use every day to keep our legs strong. Remember, we're not using our leg muscles for 14 days, so we want to make sure we're able to uh, walk when we get back home. Every morning we do what we do at home. We have to brush our teeth, hygiene. Uh, those of us that need to shave, we shave. And then we look at what the day's activity entail. The very next day, we did an ohms burn. And there it is. Uh, that basically accelerates us a little faster so that we can get closer to the International Space Station and rendezvous, physically connect with the International Space Station. There you see Nicole looking through binoculars of what will be her home from about 20 miles away, the International Space Station. As we get closer at about 600 feet, we stop and we do a flip maneuver. We turn around in, uh, in one complete circle. And this is the view for, of the astronauts on the International Space Station. They're looking at us and uh, what they're do gonna be doing is taking high resolution pictures. They wanna make sure our underbelly did not suffer any damage during ascent. So that, uh, so that, because that's our thermal protection system. That's what protects us when we come home. We don't want that to be damaged. Uh, once that happens, we get a go for proximity operations, proxops. And that means we physically connect ourselves with the uh, International Space Station. There's a lot of uh, talking and work going on during that process. And here we are uh, during that process. On the inset picture, you'll see the International Space Station on top, the shuttle on the bottom. As we get closer and closer, there's about five, six of us working uh, giving information okay. to the uh, commander as he as he's getting closer and closer to the International Space Station. Uh, we have to uh, basically dock correctly in plane because there's some latches that then get activated that then physically connects us uh, in, on a semi-permanent basis to the uh, to that uh, uh, portion of the uh, International Space Station. And then uh, what you're going to see is you see the target there that he's following to get right in the center of it. And then, uh, and then he pushes the button Stop so that fire. the thrusters pushes us a little quicker. And then the hooks uh, get activated. We're looking for a light that basically uh, uh, confirms that we have a good docking. Uh, and of course, we're all looking for that cue. Once we see it, we're happy. Uh, we're celebrating because now that allows us to pressurize the uh, vestibule between both modules, which then allows us to open our hatch and then the station folks open their hatch. Now we have access between the shuttle and the International Space Station through, the, through this little tunnel. And, uh, and so what happens then is then the commander from the International Space Station, Gennady Pedalka, a Russian at that time, uh, with his uh, five other crewmates, total of six International Space Station crewmates, rings the bell, signifying that a new crew has arrived. Our commander, C.J. Sturkow, is the first one on board. The rest of us uh, quickly follow. These guys are, uh, uh, are happy to see us, not because they're good buds of ours, but you know they've been up there for two or three months. All they've been eating is dehydrated food, and they know, they know that we have fruit and vegetables on board. So, so that's the first thing they say, what kind of fruits do you bring? And then, of course, we give them a souvenir STS-128 T-shirt, and then they give us the safety briefing. Once that's done, we're ready to work.